Welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is my shop, my stash for June. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be a quick overview of all of the products that were in my shop, my stash for May. Then we're gonna be selecting some products for June and then we're gonna round it up. I will also be giving you some sneak peeks of reviews that are coming in the upcoming month. So if you wanna know what content goes live, then this is the video that you can depend on for sure. Um, so before we get into the video, it may be good to know who I am and what I like doing on this channel. My name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. So here's the situation. This is the drawer we were working with. Excuse the mess. I end up just chucking things in here throughout the month. Um, and then <laughs> this kind of happens. So I know not very aesthetically pleasing. Some people get upset with this, but this is real life, people. <laughs> this is real life. Um, primer wise, I was using the Jelly Grip Primer from Essence and as you can see, it's about halfway done. So I'm gonna be keeping this one in. I like this. I use it every single day. Over on the other side of the drawer is another product that I need to put back on top because this is my Kiko Milano Neutral Eye Base and can you see how little I have left? Yes, there's only a little bit of product left in this little tube here. Um, it seems like because the plastic is quite thick of this tube, so this is all plastic and then there's just a little nugget of product right here. So another product that I hopefully cannot use up very, very soon. In base, as you can see, it's nearly done, not quite, but I will be already selecting my new Pretty Fresh. I just have one other of these as a setting spray in my makeup collection. This is the only setting spray I like. It started to leak, so that's why it's only in this drawer for videos. I have been keeping it upright on top of my vanity so I can use it up completely. But yeah, this, sometime this year, I'm gonna have to repurchase, like make a purchase for two of these again. Um, maybe for Black Friday, I don't know yet. Um, I, I'm not in any hurry because this is the only setting spray I've tried that I don't race through within a couple of months. Very often, a lot of the uh, setting sprays I've used in the past, I go through really, really quickly, but this one lasts me quite a long time. One of the reasons I like it, and it has a like a pretty good, uh, like a subtle coconutty scent, and it has really nice staying power, and it's definitely more like a hydrating spray more so than anything else. I did use up one product this month. This is the Super Balm from Essence, and it may not look super used up, but if I turn it to the side, you can see the entire doe foot in there. Um, nothing comes out anymore, so I was also using this in the week I had a cold sore, so I can no longer use it anyway, anymore, anyways. Um, because whenever I have a cold sore, I never use things with doe foots or things that have bullets because I don't feel that's very safe. But yeah, after I, my cold sore was done, I went in with this guy, the My Favorite Lip Balm from C.O. Bigelow. Um, I picked this up in London. C.O. Bigelow does some really, really good lip balms and I am glad to have one again in my collection. My MAC Paint Pot and Painterly and my eyeshadow and yogurt. This is how much is left of my paint pot. There's still some stuff like on the sides, but I already tried scraping it out. So when this little nugget is gone, she's done. So sometime this month, I may have to repurchase my paint pot. And then in here we have my eyeshadow and yogurt, which I, I'm contemplating like scraping everything off to the sides and like repressing it into the pan. So it gets some more use out of it because I can barely pick up what is still on the sides here. So let me know what you would do. Would you try to use it up as is or would you like to, uh, would you repress this in some way? I always feel repressing eyeshadow can sometimes mess with it. Any powder I feel can mess with the powder. Eyebrow wise, I wasn't super happy with my made to stay from Kruidvat. Um, this looked really nice at first, but it got gloopier and gloopier and gloopier. And there really isn't a lot of product in here as well. I like the brush, but I feel this is already used up. So it also got a little bit weird sometimes. So a bit more difficult to use. So that is, counts as an empties. My brow pencil by the face shop, 
I think that I'm gonna, this is gonna last 2004 as well, 2024 as well. I think this is my second year of using this one pencil. There are days where I'm super done with it and I wanna select something else and there are days where I still love it. So making, soldiering on with that one, it's why I haven't used many brow products lately. Um, the L'Oreal Lash Paradise in the brown version, I like, but it's not my favorite, but it's gonna stay in. And for my black mascara, my Essence Lash Without Limits and also my Catrice Glamandol Waterproof are still going strong. So mascara, I don't need to change out. Um, maybe the Essence one may not last the entire month, but then you'll just see it in my next Shop My Stash, what I've exchanged for. Foundation-wise, I selected three foundations to use this month. The Giorgio Armani to try and see if I can use it up. I don't feel I've made much progress, but I have definitely worn it a couple of times. And I love this shade for the summertime. It's a really good summertime foundation for me. So this is gonna go back on top of my vanity where I keep it so that if I hold it up to the light, I can sort of see how much product is still left. And I do feel I'm going like down into this tube now. It's sort of like down towards where you have the R, I think. And then these were the two products that I wanted to uh, give a whirl for the first time this month. From Eveline Cosmetics, I had the Wonder Match Lumi in and the Kiko Unlimited Foundation. Both of these are really nice. They are good drugstore foundations. Of the two, I like the Kiko just a little bit more than I did the Eveline, but they're pretty comparable in terms of what they do. And I did really enjoy these. And great news because I have now finished trying all the new to me foundations in like and skin tins in a bottle style like this that I think in like the past year or so you could say that I purchased. Um, so in June, I will be doing a video all about those uh, different foundations, comparing them and doing a ranking and letting you know which one is my favorite of all the ones that I've tried with links to all of the reviews to those different re uh, reviews because they are all reviewed over up on the blog. But I need to select new things. Um, concealer wise, I had also three things that I had selected. And in here, I put in one that I know I love just to have as a backup because I wasn't sure about these two. So the Kiko Milano Skin Tone Concealer. Can you see this one? Yeah, this is in the shade two. And this reminds me again how lovely it is. It is small though. It doesn't come with a whole lot of product. It's only 3.5 milliliters of product. So easy to, to use up, but this is gonna go back into the drawer because it's one of the concealers I'd like to use up this year. Um, Kiko Full Coverage Concealer and also by Eveline, the Wonder Match Lumi. Both of them are again nice, but especially the Kiko one is a little bit more coverage than I would wanna go for. Um, the formula is nice, but it doesn't stay very well. And I felt the same way about the Wonder Match. So not my two favorite concealers, but I still have like eight concealers to review before I can do a roundup like I'm doing this month with the foundations. But I wanna do a roundup review of all the concealers I've tried in recent months. Um, so I'm gonna have to select two new concealers to go into the drawer. I don't normally feature this, but I had definitely had a couple of days in May where I was like, oh, I don't really wanna do my eyeshadow. So I reached for this again, the Luminous Eye Tint from Essence in the taupe shade. Um, this is the Shimmering Taupe, Shimmering Taupe. And you can see, hopefully, how much of this I've already used. I'm wearing it today as well, and I absolutely love it, but that's gonna go back into the drawer. I have new eyeshadow to test out for sure. The powder is gonna stay in. This is by Etude House. This has been in for a few months and I'm making decent progress with it. Like I'm not really into using a whole lot of powder this time around, but I mean, I'm making my way through it. There is a nice dent where I put my brush in every single day and it's really nice. It's very comparable to the Hourglass in Diffused Light or the Kiko Milano Radiant Fusion powders. Um, I would repurchase the Kiko over this though, um, but it is a similar effect, so like this, this is the Secret Beam Powder from Etude. I had four blushes in, two powders and a cream and a liquid because I'm really loving my creams and liquids and but I didn't wanna forego my powder. So I had a really nice mix in here. Towards the end of the month, I mainly went in with Mood Exposure from Hourglass. This product I hadn't reached for in such a long time, but let me tell you, I loved it. Same goes for my Duo Glow from Natasha Denona. This is in the shade Ryo. 
and I really love it. It's like a more pinky toned version of Nars' Orgasm. Loved it. I didn't reach for my MAC Glow Play blush as much. I think it's a little too early. We haven't had much of a summer yet. I was hoping, of course, to get some nicer days and be able to wear this. Um, but this is the Glow Play in Heat Index, and it's that sort of putty sort of situation. And this is a really pretty coral shade on me, but definitely more so in the height of summer. So it was a bit too early of a pick. Um, but I was reaching for this, especially at the start of the month. I, I wore this a couple of times again. I loved it. The Juicy Pang Blusher in the shade Strawberry, another K-Beauty brand I just absolutely love and adore. This is one of my favorite K-Beauty finds ever, and I'm really glad I went back to it again. For a highlighter, these were my picks. I definitely went in with the Rare Beauty a couple of times, but I'm not really digging the liquid highlighter at the minute. But yeah, Mesmerize is a really pretty shade. Again, a product that's better for me if it's like nicer weather. Um, but I did wear my Space Glam from Catrice a couple of times. Um, I mainly use this as an inner corner highlight to go with all those deep dark eyeshadow palettes I was testing out all month. But I was really, really loving my Kiko Milano Glow Fusion Highlighter in shade one. Oh no, I, can you see this? Do you see? There it is, right there. I've hit pen. It's the teensiest, tinesiest little pinprick of a pen, but I've hit pen on my highlighter by Kiko. I've had this for years though, but yay. I was like thinking this morning when I was using this to get ready, I need to put this, I need to keep it in my shop, my stash so I can hit pan on it. But now I feel pretty good changing, exchanging this for something else because essentially I have already hit pan. Oh, let me see if I can again catch it for you. There it is. There, right there. Mm, so exciting. I hit pan on my highlighter. Yay. <laughs> um, but there is a bronzer in this selection as well that I think I want to keep in to try and hit pan on. It's not the Makeup Revolution because this, ooh, a little goes a long way. Um, I definitely overused my bronzer a couple of days when I was using this again and I was like, ooh, that's intense. So. Um, note to self, uh, don't overuse it and take most of it off on the back of your hand because that makes it work a lot better for me. But the Becca in Bali Sense I reach for almost every single day and this is a bronzer I would like to try to hit pan on. So I'm going to keep it in so that I can commit myself all month to using nothing but this. Next up are all of my lip products that I use this month. So I toss it all down very unceremoniously, but the past couple of days I've been really into wearing my Catrice Glossing Glow in the shade Glossip Girl. This is a really nice vibrant pinky tone. It's very similar to House Labs tint, and it definitely has that tinting formula as well, that even if the oiliness sort of rubs off, you still have that sort of pinky shade to your lips. Love that one. It's one of my favorites. Um, I also went in with my Glossier, uh, Ultra Lip in the shade Pony. This is such a pretty like mauve -y tone. It's really, really pretty. I'm not sure if you can see. Um, so that is definitely something that's gonna be, uh, like I've, I've had that in, on rotation for a while. A bit of a wild card, but I went in with my Ink Airy Velvet in shade 25, Peaches, I think it's called, from Peri Para. This is one of my favorite liquid lipstick sort of formulas. It is a tint and this had the exact peach shade I needed for a peachy look I was wearing. So I was very happy. New to me is my Revlon Cherries in the Snow lipstick. I have found out that I can buy Revlon online from Zalando. So I think I wanna try and see if I can order Sassy Mauve sometime from Zalando for sure, because that was the one everybody recommended, but I couldn't find it in England. But I could find that and I really loved it. Another shade I went back to is by Amuse. This is one of their dew tints. What shade is this in? Oh, it's, it's the thing I can't pronounce. No, I don't think the camera really focuses on a sticker that small, but it's K-K-O-T-M-O-O-L. That's how it's spelled. I don't want to butcher that. Um, then, of course, I was testing out some of my Lisa Eldridge Velveteens. Um, because I was I knew I was going to film that video, so I wanted to go back to some shades. So I wore Rain for my wear tests and I wore ribbon um, for a wedding I went to in May. So these were great trials for that. Uh, hadn't used those in a while. 
And then my other Lisa Eldridge bits that I used were my lip liner in Sorcery, which I used together with Muse lipstick, which it's becoming such a small noggin. I also wore this pink, which I love for the springtime. This is love of my life. And then I also wore Kitten Mischief, which is this really pretty like peachy nude, which it doesn't look like a shade in the bullet that I might like, but it's one of the very few ones that are a nude that I really enjoy. And then of course I wore Velvet Pompadour quite a bit, which is this really nice rosy pink. That's it for the lipsticks. Let's get into the drawer to select some foundation, some concealer, and some other bits. If you know, you know, but if you've been following my content the past couple of months, you know I need to try out some cushion foundations. I have 12 of these now, um, but uh, I bought most of these on YesStyle. The Fui one comes from um, uh, Olive Young because I couldn't find it on YesStyle. It was sold out. But these are the three I want to test out this month, just to give it a whirl. I'm going to be testing them out over the summertime. And then hopefully September or maybe early October, I can do a roundup of all of them. So I have the Fui Cushion Glass Natural in 1.5 Peach Glass. The Tear Tear Mask Cushion, Mask Fit Red Cushion in 17C Porcelain. This is the one that went viral. And then we have Catkin, and this is in shade C1. I don't know what the actual product is called. Look at that packaging, it's gorgeous. For concealer, we will be testing out these two things as new picks. The e.l.f. Uh, Hydrating Camo Concealer um, in Fair Beige. Um, this is one that I've had for a while, and I completely forgot to review it, so it's high time I get around to it. And then the YSL All Hours Precise Angles Concealer in shade LC1, which it was impossible to find my shade in this, so I hope it's gonna be okay. Here we have our little bronzer section, um, but I have the Becca, so I'm not entirely sure if I wanna go in with something new or whether I wanna stick to the Becca just for now. I've got a couple of new-ish in things. I've got the Rose Ink and the Glossier that I got in London and I haven't reviewed my Pat McGrath one yet, but I'm currently not really into the mood for testing out bronzers. Should I... wait... Should I test out this? The Solar Powder by Soap & Glory, because this is actually an old product that they re-released. Should I go back to that? I'll go back to that and test that out on top of the... So I'll test that out on top of the Becca. Highlighter-wise, is there anything here? Yeah, I just need to go back to this. I repurchased this. It's the Prism Highlighter from Clio in the shade Fairy Lights, and I was just missing this in my collection, so... And I think this, like, peachy to a pink gold sort of flash can be pretty for June. So that's something... That's an, a new old product for me. Um, liquid highlighter, maybe the Kiko, I haven't reviewed this. This Kiko highlighter may be nice as well, also has a peachy tone. I think it's going to be a peachy tone month. Oh, and I know, the Rare Beauty, I haven't reviewed yet. The, um, this is in the shade Enlighten in the powder highlighter. For blush, we're going into the cream and liquids because that's just really what I'm enjoying and this way I have a really nice range of shades as well. Um, I think I haven't reviewed any of these yet, so do high time that I reviewed these. The Makeup by Mario Blush Stick. This is the Soft Pop Blush Stick in Dusty Rose. Let me show you this shade. Really nice neutral for me and I actually want to determine as well if I want any more shades in this because I think I like the formula, but I haven't really used it all that much. So need to test it out. Um, this one is by Feve. This is the Hyper Fit Color Serum in the shade Pit a Pat. And it's sort of giving me MAC Glow Play Heat Index vibes, but a bit more pink and liquid. So it's got a little pump. So that's a K-Beauty brand. And this is also K-Beauty, but I've got two shades now of the Lily by Red, um, what's this called again? The Love, Bo Love Beam Cheek Balm. 
and I have this really nice lavendery pink shade, really nice cool tone, and I have, which that is shade number five, and I have shade number three, which is more of a peach. So I thought that could be nice. That way I have a nice blend of shades. And now I'm looking at this. This is the Glow Veil, Love Beam Glow Veil from Lily by Red in shade two. That might be pretty as well. That's more of a winter shade though. I don't think I want to wear that right now. So that's it. Those are all of the products selected for my Shop My Sash. Again, it's messy, but I can find things. I know where they're at. Uh, I mean, this is already helpful to not have to dig through my makeup drawers every single day, and I just have a selection here. That way I can much more easily try out products. It's just really, really helpful. Let me show you the eyeshadow palettes I'll be chatting about with you later this month. So you know that I really, really enjoy going back to some old favorites, and I have selected six eyeshadow palettes again that are a little bit more colorful and that I could potentially do some warmer toned looks with as well. I really rekindled my love for both warm toned and colorful eyeshadow this year and I wanna make the most of it and go back to some of my favorites. So I realized I hadn't used my Nomad Land of Fire and Ice in a while. I don't think this is still available, but I love the sort of color range we, we uh, color range we get in here. I've never loved these orange shades, but maybe when I go into this, I may wanna challenge myself and do a look with those. We'll see how it goes, how I feel at the time. But I usually really love these grayish blues these pastel shades and then these grungy sort of neutrals that it has. It has a really nice mix of shades and it's a lot more colorful yet at neutral at the same time. So this is right up my street. And I feel quite similarly about this. This is the Solomona from Odin's Eye. This is the first version they came out with. I think something happened to the manufacturer where uh, they could no longer make these pigments and that's why the palette became discontinued. But till this day, it is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes by Odin's Eye. It just is. And I think, also because of the theming, the sun and the moon, it kind of is summer solstice in a palette, and the summer solstice is later this month. So I was like, you know what? This orange is speaking my name. I want to juxtapose it with this pop of lavender. I've always loved this shade and this shade. So I can definitely already see a look coming together when I look at this. So I want to go back to my Solomona. And if we're going for like colorful yet neutral, my Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde, again, discontinued, but so, so great. I mean, this is a little bit more, again, I could go super warm tone with these like warmer browns here, but you also get this really nice section of these rosy tones, which I like. You have these pops of teal to play with. So not entirely sure yet what I would want to do with this, but it's definitely giving spring summer vibes to me and that's why i want to use it again one of the most ultimate 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 summer perfect palettes and i definitely want to by selecting this palette oh my nail polish goes i had a I, this is not planned you guys this is just not purposely aesthetic <laughs> uh nail polish is viva antigua from se which i've had for years i haven't bought a nail polish in like 10 years so um i'm not sure if you could still get it but this is the kaleidos futurism Six, no five, uh, electro turquoise. And it, this is summer in the palette to me. It has those oranges with a pop of teal. So, so beautiful. This is like the ocean, this bright neon orange I can use in the crease without a fail. Um, the dark brown works really well. You get some good shimmers in here. Um, this is such a good, good summertime color story. And this way I hope I can sort of get the systems that joy that, that serve us weather wise uh, to sort of jinx them into making us believe it's summer because we have had very little sunshine all spring and this way I just want to I just want to pray to the weather gods to please give us some sunshine with this palette. Ninhydrin from Adept. Um, I did order another Adept palette but it hasn't made its way to me just yet. Uh, the um, Amy 
uh, Loves collection, um, but the Nin Hydrin I've always said is my favorite um, Adept palette actually so I wanted to put that to the test again It's got some grungy shades, but I definitely think this bottom row is pretty decent for the Spring summertime the purple tones in here just really speak to me So this is one I wanted to go back to for that more colorful moment And that's also why I've yet again selected my club nebula. I know I've selected this several times already but it's just that good. This was limited edition. You can no longer buy this, um, but it's got those greens, those like murky purples in the middle with the neutrals and these pinky peachy tones with a pop of red. It's really nice. This is such a good palette. I'm so glad I still have this. And I think it's just a testament to how much I like it, how many times I've already selected this for my shop, my stashes and these videos. I want to like that I've been doing for about a year now where I go back to older palettes and where I really want to get the use out of my palettes again. And there is a reason why the selection for palettes I want to go back to again is so colorful because these six palettes that I want to buy, I want to try that are new to me are all quite neutral. I definitely have come into some other eyeshadow palettes and I wanted to make sure I already put them in a shop my stash as soon as I could. And I felt like this way I had a sort of good theme going on. I definitely try to keep brands together that belong together, you could say. And this way I can space it out the best way. So some of the other palettes I've shown you in my June shop my stash are going to go into my July uh, eyeshadow palette review. And then some of them may even end up in my August palette review. Um, but yeah, these are going to go into June so I can um, test everything out and still have enough time to go back to those older palettes because I always feel it's a shame if I have so many new things to try that I can't do that. But this I've only shown you in a haul. I haven't used it yet. It's by Peri Para and it's their Hip Grey eyeshadow palette. It seems like K-Beauty has finally discovered cool tones. And this I knew I would like because I have tried one of these like very long rectangular palettes from Peri Para in the Fallen Acorn shade and I liked it a lot, but it had one cream in, which I wasn't a fan of, and it was a bit too warm toned. This is not super cool toned. Now that I have it, it's not as gray as the name would suggest, but it's pretty rosy tones actually. So I can't wait to play with this and see what it does for me. Then in the same order, I got this Roman palette. This is the Better Than palette in Cheeky Cheeky Garden, the names on these things. It's very matte heavy. We only really get one true shimmer. This has a bit of a sparkle running through it, but it could be one of those mattes that has sparkle, but it could also be a satin. I'm still undecided about it, but essentially you get these rosy pinks at the top with a black and then some neutrally brown shades with two shimmers. That's sort of the setup. And I have tried many of these Better Than palettes and I keep buying them because I think they are some of the best eyeshadow that K-Beauty has to offer and I can't wait to play with this. Bought in London in May, already in my shop my stash for June because I'm super curious to see how these MUA bits are gonna go. Uh, I showed you this in my June haul as well. The Neutral Wonderlust and the Desert Bloom are like, how much are these? Three pounds, three pound 50 at the UK drugstore. You can find them online. Um, these are super cheap. I bought the two cool tone ones last week, uh, last year, and now I went with these two more neutrally ones. And one of their 15 pans. Um, I have tried MUA 15 pans in the past, and those have been really nice for me, but the Illusionist looks like cool toned heaven. It's a little bit grungy, but not too much, so I can't wait to see what this actually does on me and whether it's as cool toned as it might look. Now, if you saw my June haul, then you know I could have selected so many other new palettes to me, but as I said, I wanted to keep it limited to things I know I can get to this month. And this, I felt, went with the eyeshadow palettes that were already here theme-wise. It's the Dreamer palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. And this is really, really pretty. Um, it comes with like this rosy pink side and then this cooler toned, like it has a really stunning taupe and then a navy and a purple and everything. Like there's corresponding shimmers to all of these shades. And when I swatched it, this side of the palette wasn't as warm toned as it looked in pictures online. This has multi-chromes in and it's apparently a updated formula. 
compared to other things I've tried from the brand. So I have several Unearthly palettes already, but they are the older formula. Some of them date back to the days when they were still called Alien Cosmetics. And I wanted to try one of their newer palettes to see, is it worth the hype? They've gone up in price. It's pretty much doubled. Is it still worth the price point at this price point? That's sort of the question I will be asking myself. So the Unearthly Dreamer palette, it looks a lot prettier in real life than from the pictures I had seen online. I initially skipped on this, but then I was like sort of looking at some of the comments I was getting and uh, on my eyeshadow palette week in April. And I was like, you know what? I think it's good to try an Unearthly palette. And this was the color story that really appealed to me the most. And I kind of like this weird alien lady on the front. Um, so, uh, yeah, those are the bits I'm going to be trying. That is some content you can look forward for to in the next couple of weeks. I will be testing out, um, these, uh, cushion foundations, of course. So those are going to go up on the blog. I will be uh, doing a full blown review and ranking of all of the foundations I've tried that come in like your standard sort of bottle size. Like I showed you at the start of the video, I'm going to be doing two eyeshadow palette reviews. Um, yeah, there's just a lot more coming your way and oh, I, wait, hold on before you leave. I'm also doing drugstore week in June. So in June, I'm going to do four videos in a given week where I'm going to be talking about nothing but drugstore makeup. So uh, yeah, I hope you're as excited for that as I am. When I did a theme month in May, which was indie uh, makeup, I asked, what would you like me to do next? And most people said they wanted to see drugstore. So that's why we're doing that themed week this month. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more by me. I make several videos every single week and I hope you would like to stay tuned for more. And then I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.